Well, <clears throat> some of the viewers have been complaining to me that I, I'm not talking enough about vegetables. Hey, I suppose I don't blame you. Hardly. Mm -hmm. Probably tuned in on the channel for that purpose. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, a few weeks back I did a video about uh, lettuce and puna. You know, and uh, well, right here you can see this is Manoa, which is a favorite. This is uh, what a two gallon, I guess. I think so. And uh, now here, more of it. Beauty. These are ready to pick. Um, over here. Again, isn't that pretty? The weather has been perfect. We're in a dry spell here. We're unusually dry. And uh, that's good for Manoa lettuce in Puna. Because sometimes the rain gets so hard that it'll just pound it and pulp the stuff. It's very soft. And that's bad. You can see here, there's one. I just cut it off and brought it in. It's going to be part of dinner tonight. Oh, right there, I did another harvest. This one had three. There's only one. This had three. I took one. Here were two. I took one. Now over here, uh, kale in containers. Um, you'll notice it looks a little picked over. Yeah, that's because I've already been eating it. Uh, all these plants here have been getting picked by me. Uh, even these little guys over here. I uh, took a bit off right there. Now, I've had people who purchased kale plants from me before uh, who have come back and said, I don't know what to do with this stuff. Uh, you know, it's tough and all, blah, blah, blah. You know, well, it, don't let it get big old woody, okay? Uh, plant your kale and pick it nice and fresh. Nice, tender green leaves. Um, these are actually quite delicious. Uh, scrambled with eggs, uh, eggs and onions in the morning uh, frequently. And it's just great. Uh, polybiphenols, antioxidants there. Uh, beautiful uh, vitamin content. Yeah, kale's really good stuff. I never cared for it much, okay? And I really don't care for it <laughs> in the way that a lot of people like kale chips, you know, or, or these raw kale salads. Uh, a few are okay, but I, I don't... That's not my way with it. I like it in uh, soup. Um, it's really good in so many different cooked dishes. It's not a favorite of mine raw, uh, but it grows so well here. That's the beauty of it. And it's so nutritious, and it lives for a long time. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. Now, in picking lettuce, I noticed today a few adult thrips. Ah, the adult thrips! They flew in, and they were getting in there, starting to lay eggs, okay? So... Uh, I believe the looks of things here, before too much gets going, this is going to get out of here. In other words, I don't take it, cut it, eat it, give it to my friends, do whatever. Uh, it's it's getting there. It's a, eh, By a week, I think, this lettuce is really all going to be full-blown uh, in the weather we're having. It's beautiful weather here now. But, uh, yeah, I think I'll be ahead of the thrips in that game. So this is going to work. Because they, they, they weren't here in the soil. They had to fly in from outside. Yeah, I've been uh, sort of turning over the summertime vegetable garden, uh, heading for a winter one here. And so I have uh, chopped and made mulch out of a lot of weeds, for instance. Uh, we still have some cabbage in the ground. There's perennial chili peppers out here, and of course papayas around. Uh, over there, though, I've got some uh, Anaheim and some jalapeno varieties, uh, new ones, disease-resistant. Um, they're very strong, very good plants. I'm enjoying them, man. Uh, but over here, I've been dragging my weed block around, okay, and uh, putting it into new and different areas to kill off the weeds from some of my summer crops. And then, in turn, over here, I have opened up what was covered with weed block and I've installed cabbages, broccoli, onions over here on this side and then again onions over there on that side all the way down. And I have a big pile of uh, pigeon pea mulch over here 
that I'm going to go through there and cut some of the stalks and all of that is going to go over the top of the cardboard you see here okay cover it as a mulch and, uh, in past years I had often planted in uh, double and triple rows you know I kind of consolidated my planting so that kind of consolidated the fertilizer and everything else but what's happening to me is keeping up after the weeds in this jungle you can see over there that's still the garden all this uh, <laughs> all that junk I haven't gotten to that yet um, yeah keeping up after the weeds is pretty tough for me uh, and so I've decided I'm going to single rows which you, you see now the spacing between the rows is going to be just about the size of a sheet of, of uh, post-consumer cardboard uh, and then I'm going to cover everything not only with the mulch like the pigeon peas there from chop and drop but also I have just recently we've cut down a jackfruit and we were chewing it all up so I got some jackfruit mulch chew as soon as I can find a able-bodied helper uh, we're gonna go ahead and haul a lot of this stuff up and put it on top of that cardboard in the garden and then there's another pile here yet waiting to be chipped and more wood over there I have no idea whether I can grow mushrooms on the jackfruit. I think I'm going to try. <laughs> Too big to grind. One of Ellen's associates um, with the Orchid Society, I believe also does uh, oh, uh, citrus grafting, small nursery operation. Now she got me a, a nagami kumquat from him. And I uh, haven't had a nagami since I moved from California. I always liked him. But... Uh, this thing is taken off crazy, and I see it's intercropped here with broccoli. That is weird, right? Yeah, sure. Only, only Bill intercrops kumquats and broccoli, but it's working. Um, the kumquat was at this point here, and so you see this great big vigorous shoot, and these shoots have pretty much doubled. Um, you know, blame it on the broccoli, right? <laughs> blame it on the broccoli. Um, it's probably. I'd say the same thing that's made with the broccoli grow underneath the uh, cardboard there is uh, a whole lot of my kitchen compost. It's living on coffee grounds, banana peels and whatnot. Dragon fleet fruit flowering has been kind of light this year, but I see some nice uh, Frankie's Red here. There's a, another one right down there. And here's one. I had good S8 earlier, actually quite a few of them. I have a feeling if I took better care of this place sometimes, <laughs> maybe they'd grow better. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I, perhaps I will. And in closing, well, I've got some pretty good stuff here in the nursery. We get nice strawberries. Uh, there's nice papayas there, the dwarf Waimanalo type. And over here is uh, some pretty good looking mountain apples. Uh, assorted little things and I got vegetable plants around yet some uh, just did a bunch of rollinias over there so in closing you might drop in have a look around if you're curious Aloha.